Joining us this morning is the uh, President and CEO of the Venango Area Chamber of Commerce. We have Susan Williams with us here this morning. Good morning, Susan. How are you? Good morning. Um, super. Super. Fresh off of a great festival. That's excellent. Nice job. You helped. Thank you. The weather was, was wonderful and uh, the town was packed. It, you know, you can't beat good weather for a festival, so you have to give credit where credit's due. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful when we come into a nice week. A little hot at the beginning, but we ended up pretty good. Uh, but yeah, what what a great effort for the whole community. Um, of course, I have to give a whole lot of credit to my staff. Uh, you know, the, one of the unsung heroes of this festival is is Tessa Byam, my executive assistant, who really has taken this, um, you know, our events and made sure that we get every detail. So I, I really do want to do a shout out to Tessa, but she is, you know, right there beside her, my entire staff who just are, um, you know, thinking of things before they happen so that we can make sure that we put together a great festival, right right from the first step to the close up. In fact, we're, we're still cleaning up a little bit and uh, we make a real effort to make sure we get things put away in a way we can access them really easily. So we're, st- we're still gonna be doing that for a few days. Well, it seemed like it brought in a lot of visitors over the weekend, uh, just a lot of folks, you know, out seeing each other and enjoying the uh, the events and, and the music and the parade and everything. Oh. Well, yeah, one of the real highlights of the whole festival for me is uh, as I run into people in town, um, some that I know and haven't seen in a long time, but often people that are new to me, I have the chance to introduce myself and let them know, you know, who I am and, and what we do as a chamber and how much we love bringing the festival. And just hear wonderful comments. I mean, there's still a lot of people that make this their annual pilgrimage to come back to town and, you know, participate in maybe family reunions or class reunions. Um, you know, we, we hear a lot about the changes they're observing and, and some, you know, love to reflect on the past, but I love when I hear those who are seeing the positive things that are happening in the community. And festival gives us just gives us a chance to invite people into town to see what's going on, and I I just anticipate that every year we'll get a little better. Every year is great though. That's yeah. that, and that's the beauty of it, right? There's yeah. As I often say, these are somebody's good old days. Y- y- yes. So, <laughs> so you need to remember that that when we look back and think about the past, I in fact I was having a little fun with digging through some. Uh, files. I I keep a hold of old historic, um, you know, brochures and files and newspaper clippings here from years past. So I went digging a little bit to just take a look and see, uh, you know, the lineup of what we do during festival compared to, I think the one that I spent the most time looking to is about 1995. And um, most of us would go back that many years and say, oh, remember when? Well, we really had more events going on this past week than we did in 1995. Um, Many of them were the same, but there were there are other things that have come forth. And, you know, they're a little different. We, we had a, a little bit more population in town, so we might have seen some bigger crowds. Uh, but I think, you know, given my 18 years here at the festival, this year was just just a real success. We'll we'll chalk it up as such. Absolutely. Well, uh, very well done uh, to you guys, the, the staff, the volunteers, uh, the city. Um, nicely done. Nicely done. Well, thank you. And we appreciate you joining us for the parade and emceeing the parade. So parade is always a, a really fun day. And it wouldn't be the Saturday of Oil Heritage if we didn't get threats of thunderstorms. Yes. In the <laughs> afternoon. That's what keeps us on our toes. Every year yep. we get a threat of thunderstorms. So we spend an hour or two fielding all of the questions about what we're going to do about the parade. That's really funny because we were joking about that because last year – we were, we, yeah, but we were waiting inside the studio uh, for the rain to stop so we could rush everything out and get it set up in time. And yeah, about half the time they're right and we get a storm, but it always ends before the festival, before the parade. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, that's, that's one way I can tell that my staff have really come along because the first year or two, they, get really uh, worried you know what are we going to do what are we going to do and they're kind of joining in with everyone else and I say well we're going to have a parade and we're going to probably you know get wet if it rains Um, but if it's dangerous we're going to do what adults do we're going to go inside (laughs) we're not going to put ourselves in danger we're going to encourage everyone else to do the same Um, but we're going to have a parade if it's safe to do so and so this year as I you know start to kind of look at the some of the predictions and look around they're saying don't worry about it we're just going to get wet (laughs) So it's really interesting to see how we evolve when you've done so many festivals. You kind of get used to the hazards. 
Well, I, I and, and this isn't uh, the things that I noticed uh, being at the parade, uh, and those uh, who watched us, um, for those who couldn't make it down, really enjoyed uh, the parade. Um, the amount of effort that went into the floats, just incredible. Um, and, and you got that nostalgia from the folks watching. There were some comments where, you know, people were talking about, oh, you know, I remember growing up and watching this, or I couldn't be there. I live, you know, in another state or whatever. Boy, it's so great to see that building still there. And yeah. um, that's been very exciting to see that. Yeah, it's, I, I think the parade is just one of those things that, that um, brings back memories for everyone. I know it, it certainly does for me, as we've always brought our children there. And I think about the traditions that we built around that. So if you are listening and you have young children or grandchildren, make those memories with your kids. Don't, you know, don't get caught up in reflecting on that things are different than they were. Again, create your the good old days for your children and your grandchildren. That's and well as said. long as they're with you, you'll have a great time too. Yeah, so. they don't they don't know. They have no yeah. idea. That's 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 it for them exactly. with what they're seeing right then. I hear that a lot from my young professionals that while we're hearing about the way things used to be, we have no reference to that. <laughs> this is what we remember. <laughs> right. So um I, I was gonna pull up real quick and take a look at our dates for next year. We you know, we hear people asking about dates all the time, and we know when it's going to be next year. It's going to be Oil Heritage Festival will be July 20th through 23rd of 2023. So whether you're planning uh, to get your float ready for the parade or a family reunion, you'll want to put that on your uh, on your calendar. So July 20th through 23rd, be there. It'll be our 40th, 40, 45th, oh, 45th wow. festival. Wow. That's yeah. great. Uh, listen, I'm not prepping you for a year of questions. I, this is just the one and done for a while. Uh, but do you do you have a wrap up meeting usually or in the next couple we of weeks? Oh, you did. We we actually did on Monday. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we we spent the morning fielding, you know, people coming to get their baskets and just getting some orders to the office, and then by noon we were all sitting around the table with the schedule and going item by item by item. Wow. Uh, we really have to do it while it's really fresh. Um, so we talked about here are things that would make next year go a little more smooth. Um, you know, there, there wasn't too much we forgot, but there were things that were last minute that we can anticipate sooner. Um, people we might want to involve that would make the festival even better. So we really did that formal wrap up meeting already. And now, um, again, it's kind of putting stuff away because <laughs> we actually have a lot of festival stuff. You know, um, some of our, our chair people have been dropping things off. We still have tables and chairs that we rented that are right at the front door of the office. So. Uh, so the wrap up is done and now we're moving quickly into cranberry festival planning so wow. we'll produce a newsletter this week so if you're listening and you're someone that has something that needs to be published in the newsletter please call us like asap like as soon as you get done listening to me give me a call and say hey we had something we want to get in the newsletter I, i'm surprised you didn't take monday off no we tried that one time uh we've we've often heard that some others do that um, my intention was that our staff would all get done and go home early that day. They didn't buy much, maybe an hour. Um, we just, for one thing, Busy. as I experienced the year that I, that we decided to take off, you know, I rolled in just, just to make sure things were okay in the morning and never got out because people were constantly coming in either to drop things off, pick things up, make comments. Um, I was glad that I was there to hear the thank yous and the good job and the, you know, those yeah. things. So I realized at that point that um, we really need to be here and, and everyone has the chance to take a day off kind of either at their will or we, we were trying to figure out if we could plan a staff outing. Um, we've mm -hmm. done that some years past where we all just take the day and go spend the time together and enjoy some downtime. Uh, but in reviewing the calendar, it's just it's not going to work for us this year because we have so much out in front of us. And our intern's days are coming to an end. So Lexi will go back to school soon, and, and Morgan's internship will end in the next few weeks. So the chance for us all to get together and just sit quietly doesn't look like it's going to happen. Got to, got to meet Lexi on, on Saturday, and uh, she was one of the judges. Yeah, uh, Lexi's super. Both of our interns are just wonderful. Lexi's on her second year with us, and we hope that she'll return again next year. She's a student at Slippery Rock um, College and has been just a wonderful addition to our staff. She brought order to the parade. She's the one that received all the parade registrations, got everything in order, and then uh, organized the judging of the parade. So uh, wonderful to have her with us. We'll miss her when she goes back, but uh, probably see her over the holidays. 
Well, that's and that's nice, and, th- and there's a great uh, history there, uh, Susan, where uh, interns who have been with you they go off to school, they enjoy to, you know coming back and visiting or coming back next summer. Uh, so th- there's a real good track record there. Yep, and occasionally they find their way back to us. You know, it, it depends very much on what our schedule for hiring is and what their intentions are. But there have been um, at least two or three occasions in the past where we've had an intern that's ended up in a position here at the chamber. And if not here, it's a great way for us to evaluate kind of the strengths of our interns and make recommendations out in the community of where they apply or, or, you know, be a referral for them. So we love the intern program. We have been fortunate enough to be able to secure funding for that. Um, I'll remind our listeners that if that's something you would like to be included in, as we approach spring and look for funding, I often share with those businesses who I know are looking for interns what kind of funding opportunities might exist for them. They tend to change year to year. So with the exception maybe of FIA, uh, which we haven't used in a while, they're, they're, they're pretty good, um, oh, I'm trying to think, of incentive mm-hmm. for um, involving interns. Uh, there, there are challenges uh, with not getting a good intern or not committing the time it, that's needed, but we can help our businesses with understanding how do you be a good employer of interns? How do you prepare yourself? How do you commit the time? You know, what do you do to to make sure that you're embracing that opportunity? Wonderful. Uh, You're watching The Morning Drill on stream television and on Armstrong's Neighborhood Channel and listening to it on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Susan Williams with us from the Venango Area Chamber of Commerce. Well, a big event uh, in the books, and we're looking at August already. August. Ooh, it's coming. Yep. Yep. And August is when we just, we take a little breather. Now we have some things going on. We have a a mixer coming up. That will be, let me just tell you here in a minute. Um, We have a mixer at Lee James office on August 4th. So that's out in Seneca. So that um, he tries to do an annual uh, mixer for our members. That's a joint mixer with the Franklin Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, we actually, oh, I was thinking we get a breather, but we also have our, oh, we have another <laughs> mixer the next week on the 10th at Foxburg. That's always a really oh, favorite yeah. mixer for everybody to get down to Foxburg. And there are usually multiple chambers involved in that mixer. Um, we also have, let's see, um, a steak fry. So the steak fry is on August 18th. That's a favorite event too. If you've never attended a steak fry, uh, give us a call. We best give us a minute to describe what that's like. But it's it's really a very informal evening with other members networking, and that is um, that is directed at our chamber members and their guests. And let's see, uh, if you have been to Steak Fry, you're probably not going to want to miss it because it's always a, a favorite event. So that that again, that kind of launches us into September when we'll be holding um, Cranberry Festival on August 17th. So as we're planning for that, if you are uh, interested in being involved in Cranberry Festival, we'd like to know. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. If you are a Cranberry or Seneca business, we'll be assisting with um, a business expo, which will be held on the 15th. So that is meant to be um, Cranberry Township uh, businesses and that will be at the cranberry mall and then on saturday we'll have the full-fledged festival so we'll have children's events we anticipate having music a craft show car show everything you've you've always enjoyed about cranberry festival before we will be holding that in the cranberry mall parking lot um, inside if weather demands but um, that will be um, a really you know another full day festival so uh, if you are interested in being a crafter or food vendor you can let us know that too and they can just call the chamber for that they can okay. yep yeah you can always email me at s williams at venango chamber.org call us at 814-676-8521 or stop by um, we are normally here from about nine to four actually we're here longer than that but more, most dependably from nine to four monday through friday I always encourage people to give a quick call if you're going out of your way. It's not common, but every once in a while we all have to step out of the office and go opposite directions for a few minutes. So we wouldn't want anyone to miss us. Is this a good time of year to uh, catch up with with you uh, if a business wants to just kind of update what's going on with them or pick your brain or see what's coming up? It actually is. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, that's one of the things we talked about, including in our newsletter this month, is I I have actually had, it's been so refreshing that I've had a number of businesses ask me if we can meet just for, you know, a half an hour to an hour 
of just sitting down and, and talking about their business. And uh, I, I say I'm a little like a business therapist, like a good therapist. I do more listening than talking, but it's a good chance to just reflect on what's going on in, in the business, um, how they, you know, they may be in some cases looking for how they better utilize the benefits of membership. But sometimes it's just to sit and, and be able to talk about what they're experiencing, how they're marketing and promoting, how they're dealing with their kind of staff culture and hiring and retaining employees. Um, there's a lot of things going on in business. And I think there's never been a time that it's been more valued that we, we are able to really just sit and reflect with someone else. And I'm happy to do that. So um, I don't and I don't uh, assume that every business is interested in spending that time talking with me. But fortunately, some have been really proactive in reaching out to me. So um, I would encourage anyone that would like to do that. They can call me, they can text me, they can Facebook message me, and we can just set up a time at, at their convenience. I can come to a business where they can come right here to our office and we can find a, a quiet space to have a cup of coffee or a bottle of water and just talk about what's what's going good in business and what could go better. Um, you know, the newsletter offers a lot of um, a lot of information for for businesses that's very helpful. And um, you know, if maybe you maybe you find that you're looking at that going, boy, that's nice for this, um, but maybe I need some information about you know something that that affects me and my business. Well, you have a lot of connections and. Well, that, that's often one of the biggest outcomes that come from one of those meetings is realizing the people that I know or my staff know that I think everybody else knows and, and I realize that there are introductions that I can make. Uh, so that's probably one of the most valuable things. And, and of course, there's sometimes the, um, the assumption that because you've been in the community and been in business for a very long time that you know everybody and you know everything going on. But as any small business owner knows, you get very, very focused on your own business, your own customers, your own vendors. So often there are really wonderful things going on around the community, around the region, and there are new people involved that could be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe they're your perfect customer. Maybe it's a vendor offering something that you didn't know about, or maybe it's just another person going through what you're going through that you would benefit from knowing. Um, we clearly are really connected here with our young professionals, and most businesses are looking for ways to uh, infuse their business with succession planning or just new energy, and we can make those introductions to our young professionals. Hey, another thing that's that's really timely to talk about right now is leadership. So there's yes. probably no more efficient way for you and your employees to really get reacquainted with the community than through our leadership program. So we are still taking applications. We've got room for a few more. We've got great registrations, but I think we can probably take three to five more. And um, that is a commitment. There's a one and a half day commitment in September for the overnight retreat and then one day a month. And we really have an expectation to get the most out of that program. You'll aim at perfect attendance. And by full day, I mean eight o'clock to four thirty um, one day a week. That's the second Wednesday. But I promise you, there's there's no way you can come out of that program not feeling like you you learned so much that you didn't know so many people that you didn't know you could connect with everyone regardless on their level of experience their age including myself just continue to be amazed by how much more we can learn I'd say that's a that's a great testament uh, to the program uh, because not only do you say it but Krista says it as well yeah you learn something every time you go through this I mean everybody's learning and it's an incredible journey oh, yep yeah, and, and for me, um, you know, certainly some of our sessions, uh, we bring in the same presenters, we go to some of the same locations, but year to year, things shift in every business. So what we experience when we're out visiting a business or having guest speakers often changes year to year based on the experience they had. And of course, how I interpret the information um, that goes on in a given day changes around the people who are with me as they provide input and feedback on whatever the subject matter is. So there's just so much to be learned through the leadership program. Um, you do not have to be a member to participate. There is a cost involved and we do have some scholarships available. Um, there, uh, there are several businesses over the years and including this year who are sending multiple people to the program. So you, you may find that 
you have someone that would go, but they're more comfortable if someone else from your business accompanies them. We've had spouses attend. We've had siblings attend. Sometimes the same year, sometimes different years. Uh, but any anyone, regardless of age and experience, should be considering whether that might be a good opportunity for them. Susan Williams joining us this morning. Good to see you. Congrats. Great to see you. Have a wonderful week. Thanks, you Talk too. To you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.